Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very cool knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Elisha Isham designed BRS Aeon Integral. <laughs> okay, listen, first off, this knife is going to be listed right down in the description. You can buy this knife right now, absolutely. Uh, it'll be listed right at the top, so if you want to check this out, you can. This is an integral knife that comes in at $289. If you're new to my channel, right, or you're new to the knife world, uh, this is, by the way, titanium and M390. If those terms and numbers, they don't mean anything to you, you're probably assuming he's emphasizing that because $289 is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. But for an, an, an integral made out of these materials, <laughs> No, that's wildly inexpensive, right? Uh, just for example, you know, if we're looking at a um, if we're looking at a titanium frame, I'm looking for another one here that I can use as an example. If we're looking at a uh, pillar construction titanium frame lock, this is a bad example because this is a Direwear S90, but much more expensive knife, right? But generally speaking, right, uh, a pillar construction uh, titanium frame lock is two pieces of titanium, and then in between is um, you're going to have pillars or standoffs, or in this case, a backspacer, right? Uh, when uh, during the creation of these scales, if something gets messed up, you're simply out this one side or one area of one side, whereas on an integral. It's milled from a single block of titanium, which means they got to get everything right first try. That is not a cheap mistake if you mess that up, right? So any knife, right, you take any model that's a pillar construction frame lock, right? If you made the exact same knife, same materials, everything's exactly the same except it's one piece of titanium, the uh, integral will be more money, usually substantially more money, right? I understand people want to tell me Tucson has... Integral knives that aren't, you know, that... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. For the most part, Tucson really hasn't impressed me. I mean, their quality's okay. They need to work on their heat treat, right? It's just not... It's not where, you know, I'd, I'd like it to be for my channel. But if we're talking about companies that do a great job with um, fit and finish, a great job with heat treat, and also make integral knives, right? This is manufactured in China, by the way. Even those other companies that are manufacturing out of China, right? Like We and Riot. With We, I think uh, their least expensive uh, integral is something around $300, $350. Uh, Riot, you're definitely going to pay more. You're looking at $400, $450, $500, $600 sometimes, right? Benchmade does, uh, they did a, an American in, uh, integral. Uh, M390 in titanium or 20CV in titanium. They, the, the Anthem came in at $400. Making an, an integral knife, making any version of a titanium frame lock into an integral uh, knife, right? It's all one piece of titanium. We, it'll be more money. They really have to get everything right that first try. Um, so that is amazing. I wanted to say that right away, that this is just incredible. Um, and we're going to do the full review. Um, but yeah, I, I wanted to let you guys know right off the bat, um, you can find this right down in the description right now. I've actually had this knife before. I had it, and uh, I ended up um, sending it uh, sending it back, thinking that my review was complete. And when I went back to look at the file, I had, for whatever reason, the file was just cut out. It was only half a review. Uh, the, the phone had stopped recording in the middle of it, and I was just waiting to upload it, and the knife was already had already been sent back. So anyways, BRS... Uh, they were uh, uh, really cool and, and they said, is there anything you want to check out? And I said, yes, that Elijah Isham uh, Eon uh, Integral. Absolutely. So they sent this along. Thank you so much, BRS. Um, and thanks to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. Uh, if you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and you're also enjoying the daily knife con on this channel and you'd like to support me, you can find my link for Patreon right down in the description. And uh, please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. We're going to get into this here in a sec, but first... Let's go ahead. We're really zoomed up today. Well, let's go ahead and get a uh, measurement of this guy. Overall length of the Eon is coming in at eight and a quarter. Blade length is coming in at about, boy, an impressive, really? Almost 3.75 inches on the blade. Cutting edge, three and a half inches. That's really impressive ratios there. Is that right? Did I look at that correctly? That's not normally. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, how about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1? The Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall and just barely fits on camera, just a little bit longer there. How about up against the uh, Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at uh, 8.3 inches overall. It looks a little bit shorter, but we're at an angle here, so just remember that. Uh, how about up against the Benchmade Group Tillion, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in a little bit shorter at 8 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. And last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Group Tillion coming in at 6.75 inches overall. How's the action on this guy? To my knowledge, this is running on ceramic bearings, and it is nice and smooth. Uh, it does take just a tiny little bit of encouragement uh, right now, but it is, I, I mean it guys, this is glassy smooth. The action feels great, flipping action is great, the detent is good. Um, my suggestion is to really uh, kind of get up on that corner, maybe kind of lean over and touch that jimping just a bit and just kind of flip straight down. It's more of a light switch flipper. The detent is nice and clicky, like that. No mush. Can you access this area in here? Not really. It's more of a decorative. You can kind of, you can grab it like this and open it. Truthfully, I would have liked to see this opening hole extend for this entire area. Maybe if they changed uh, the angle of the flat just slightly, right? So it kind of rose here and then you'd have this area in here where you could mill an area out. And then you could have done the reverse flick. But this, this area right here, unfortunately, is is not functional. They could have added a thumb stud in here. I think that would have been a little bit better. Or they could have just left nothing in there, right? But uh, as of right now, this is just an area that you can look at, and it it looks nice. It keeps uh, uh, it gives the blade some character um, that otherwise would just look very plain. So okay, but the flipper tab works just fine, and there's nothing in the cutting pad, so I don't have a problem with that. As you're flipping this every now and then, your finger is going to catch this corner over time. That's going to wear on your finger a little bit. It's a slight annoyance if you're going to sit around and fidget with it, but truthfully, the flipping action is great. The flipping action is well done, or the flipper tab is well done. There's no double clutch, right? Clicky detent, check, check, check. Pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. This guy's fairly thick. In fact, it's, it is pretty thick. The titanium scales are pretty thick. The blade stock's not overly thick, but the titanium scales are. I don't know that it necessarily needed to be that thick, but it's not crazy. It's not med for thick or anything like that. Length and height up against two knives with awkward carry profiles and nobody ever complains about. The PM2 and Para 3. Why are we so zoomed up today? Oh my gosh. Uh, Lengthwise, it is not quite as long as the PM2. Definitely longer than the Para 3. In terms of height, including the flipper tab, we are just about, not quite, not quite as tall. You can see there. It's tall, but not not crazy, you know. Really, it's going to be the weight that's going to bother some people. Because this is an integral, you could imagine, um, milling out the inside of this is, I don't know if anybody's worked out a way to do that on an, an integral knife, right? So you don't have any milling on the inside of this. And your blade stock thickness is, hang on. Blade stock thickness on this guy is uh, 157,000, so probably 155,000. So I'm going to assume that, that that's normally, usually the blade stock doesn't come in like that. I'm going to assume that's an error on my calipers and it's either 155 or 160, which is what it looks like. So you've got quite a bit of material here. It's not an overly massive knife, but it is fairly thick. I'm going to guess this knife weighs five ounces. Oh, okay, 4.44 ounces. Really not that bad. It's over the four ounce mark, it's over the ounce and inch uh, mark, but for full titanium, it's a full size knife. Full thickness, unmilled titanium scales, right? Um, I'm kind of impressed with the weight. Where's the balance at? Uh, yeah, okay, it's right there where you're gonna put your index finger, okay. <laughs> Wow, all right, that was surprising. I never weigh knives until they get on camera. I like to, you know, give you guys my thoughts on how it feels and what it actually is, right? So there you go. Um, not bad, not bad at all. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. Get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very recommendable and very inexpensive. You can find them right down in the description. Uh, I'm gonna guess that the pivot screw is T8. And we have T8. Right, and the body screws are uh, well. The body screw on this area right here that's going to be a T6 on the pocket clip, and that's it because this is an, an integral. There's no other body screws. That's great. I love 
Love integral knives. You don't have to worry about what's adjust. What is I'm, is one of my screws going to back out? Right? Am I? Do I have everything lined up correctly? You don't have to. It's all one piece of titanium. That's great. The only thing you have to worry about is the pocket clip screw. Nobody ever has to worry about this screw. Don't mess with that screw. That's the insert screw, right? And then there's the pivot. The way, the reason that this is shaped like this, I'm going to guess, is so that they can get the internal hardware fitted in there correctly with the bearings. Probably so they can fit the the race bearing on there or the steel bearing for the um, the, uh, the the bearings to actually um, or the steel washer for the the bearings to ride on so that they're not riding on titanium, right? This is just great. I, I really, I'm, I'm really happy with this uh, in terms of the construction. It's just, it looks nice and it's, it, I just love uh, integrals. I, I love them. I know I'm pronouncing it two different ways. Um, it's because my brain wants to say integral and my wife always corrects me and says it's integral, right? So now I say both because I don't want to give up my original thought process, but I also want to prove to people that I can pronounce it correctly. <laughs> Ah, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's great. That's the cool thing. Really cool thing about uh, integral knives. Um, did we do everything? I think we did. I think we did everything. Let's go ahead and move on to the anatomy. So we have a bead blasted titanium frame, which with some really interesting, you know, for an Elijah Isham design, it's really pretty mild. Usually Elijah Isham likes to create what looks like a robot spider web with a blade on it. That's nothing against Elijah Isham. His that everybody knows his designs. They're so right. They're they're they're, they're so uh, intricate and detailed and complex. And he still manages to create ergonomics in these things. Right. It's really really wild. This is a much more mild design. In fact, if it didn't say Elijah Isham on the listing for it, um, then I wouldn't have known. Uh, the only thing that's on this blade, by the way, is the Evolve logo, the BRS Evolve logo, and then that's it. I don't even think it shows the blade steel anywhere, which is truthfully something that I appreciate, right? I know what blade steel it is. I bought it. I paid two, you know, in this hypothetical circumstance where I picked this up, I paid $290 for it. Not many people are going to spend that much money on a knife without knowing what it's made out of. So that's fine, right? I also don't mind if the blade steel is on the blade. What I don't like is you know, K1002102102210 or www.blahblahblah.com, my aunt's blood type and the name of her dog, right? I don't need, I don't need that. So this is great that we have just the Evolve logo and nothing else on it. Um, but as far as the lines here, the million, this has all been milled and it looks nice and it looks like really aggressive and kind of crazy, like it might be uncomfortable in the hand, but truthfully, no. It's very comfortable. The edges have all been nicely knocked down. This is all very smooth and comfortable. The pocket clip does not come to a sharp point or anything like that. The pocket clip is kind of thick. It's kind of excessively thick, right? So that's the part that might create a little bit of an obnoxious zone for some people, but not, not really, right? Everything's nice and smooth. This area right here is nicely cut out and will fully accept two full fingers, unless you have giant, giant hands, right? I wear an XL size glove, which means basically an average hand. I can get a full four finger grip on this guy and it is quite comfortable. Because of the shape of the flipper tab, it's not super aggressive right here. The jimping's not aggressive, which means you can go to town on this guy. You can go ahead and continuously use it, right? There is a sharpening choil here. It is not a forward choil. Don't, don't try to put your finger up there. You're not super far away from the blade. You're a decent amount, but I don't think it's an issue. There's nothing in the cutting path. I, I really, really like the ergonomic lines on this. I, I, I'm, I'm happy with, with how they did this. It's, it's very comfortable. The blade is very functional. We have this sort of sheep's footy, Elijah Aishami sheep's footy drop point, super weird thing going on. Lots of belly, usable belly. This is of course M390, so you're gonna have excellent edge retention and excellent corrosion resistance. The corners up here on the blade have been nicely knocked down. There's a beautiful tumbling going on here. We have some, kind of a, a satin flat, right? And then contrast with the tumbling. Uh, the swedge looks nice. There's plenty of durability, plenty of robustness out to the tip. And there's plenty of material out here. I wouldn't call the tip delicate. You got a nice puncture tip, right? This is gonna be a great blade for EDC. Behind the edge, it is somewhat thick. I'm not going to call it thick, right? But it'll still slice, it'll still cut, it'll make short work of your EDC style tasks. And if you want to go out and really beat on this thing, you're good to go. This is a titanium frame lock and it is an integral. So you do have some extra fortification there. Um, is it going to be that much stronger than a titanium frame lock? I don't know exactly how you might measure that, but I'm going to feel more confident 
right? Just because there's less hardware, there's less stuff that can fly off or try to move around, right? If the tolerances weren't exactly perfect on a pillar construction version of this knife and stuff's moving around, right? Then maybe it's gonna cause it. You don't have to worry about that. Nothing's gonna move on this guy because it's all one piece of titanium. It's great. Um, I like that. And I'm talking about, you know, basically, I know people say, oh, that still has hardware, as it could technically, technically move, but I'm talking about two pieces of titanium being held together with a backspacer and multiple screws and standoffs. If the tolerances weren't perfect and things were moving around, then it would ultimately adjust, you know, potentially the lockup percentage or the lockup geometry, right? Or how the blade interacts with the stop pin and how it nests into the frame, right? The, the, th the only way that this blade's going to come off center is if the pivot screw backs out just a little bit it has nothing to do on a you know like with a standard you know uh frame lock knife that's pillar construction uh, and a slight adjustment in one of the body screws can actually cause something to come off center or the blade to come off center or adjust in a weird way right not on this guy you don't have to worry about that it's either yeah just crank the pivot back down right you, you're good to go um the blade is great i there, there's nothing to complain about with the blade um no double clutch on this guy nice and smooth very very satisfying uh, the back of this, I think this looks nice, right? They just have the three downward arrows. Kind of looks like a chevron pattern, right? Uh, I think it has something to do with the Evolve logo. It's fine. It looks nice. I love how the back of these look because it's just a, a just a big brick of titanium, right? It's nice. Pocket clip, pretty good. Um, there's a lanyard hole. It's not being prioritized over the pocket clip, so that's fine. I don't care that it's there. This is going to carry about right here. Not a lot sticking up out of your pocket. And I believe the, uh, yeah, the pocket clip is nested into the titanium frame, which means it's not going to move. Um, this does have a continuous ramp, so it's going to rise to meet um, your uh, 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 pocket seam. <laughs> Brain fart there. It's going to rise to meet whatever thickness of pocket seam that, uh, you know, you're working with, right? So that's fine. The pocket clip is just big and thick. It doesn't need to be this tall. It could actually be just a little bit shorter. It's okay though, right? It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't cause that much of an issue in hand. I never talked about who might be, you know, bothered by carrying this. Truthfully, you know, this is a fairly thick knife. Um, it's not super duper heavy, but you know, and it's not super wide or super long, but it is fairly thick. So if you're wearing thin pants, right? Or you wear athletic shorts on a day-to-day -day basis, you're wearing fitted dress pants, this probably isn't going to be your thing. Or at least if you force it, it's not going to be comfortable. In jeans, no problem at all. In and out of the pocket, it's easy, no issue. We have a steel lock bar insert that is doubling as the over-travel stop. Um, you can see right there, I think. Sorry about that, I had to cut the video because apparently I reached maximum file size. But anyways, uh, there's the steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over-travel stop. You can see we're locking up here at a perfectly acceptable 25% or so, and the blade comes perfectly, perfectly centered. Um, there is no blade play, up, down, left, or right. The stop pin is right here, and you can see there's lots of shouldering wrapping right around there. That's nice. Uh, yeah, everything's great here. Everything is great. This is awesome. What, what can I complain about? This area right here, you flip it at the wrong angle, you're going to run into that corner. You really need to light switch it, right? Um, it's a little bit thick behind the edge, not bad. You can't access this area, right? You can, but it's not comfortable. This whole area needs to be the opening slot. That would have been much better, right? Truth be told, there is a little bit of a sharp spot right here, but when are you going to be interacting with that? Not not often, right? Pocket clip's a little bit thick. It's a little bit excessive, and, and truth be told, the scales are a little bit thick and obsessive, right? Uh, they don't need to be that thick, but it's kind of neat that they are. I kind of like it, right? Integral knives have this very robust, very powerful feel about them. So if you're, you're into that, I kind of like some excess thickness in my knives personally, but I know a lot of people don't. It does fill the hand and it does give you um, a feeling of confidence, right? Boy, other than that, I don't have much to complain about here, guys. This is an M390. BRS is not known for doing a bad heat treat, right? Which is why I say that I'm, I'm happy to spend more money for something like this over something from Tucson, right? Kind of, Tucson, you got to get, get your heat treat figured out, right? Some people say, oh, some, some tests show that it's fine. Well, but it's not consistent, right? We're not, we're not getting some, a lot of consistency. I've never heard anything bad about BRS knives or the, the M390 that BRS does, right? So I'm okay with that. I love the milling work. I love the design. Ergonomically, very comfortable, very functional, right? The biggest, the coolest thing here is that this knife has every last bit of quality that you would expect from a knife in this price point. And as an added bonus, it is an integral knife. Oh, God. 
289 bucks. Yeah, um, I think this is great. If you can get around some of those little nitpicks, right? Some of those nitpicks are going to bother some people more than others, but this is really good. This is very recommendable. Absolutely. This is going to go on my most recommended knives playlist, and I urge you guys to go check it out. You can get this right now uh, at the link that's right at the top of the description, right? And depending on when your video when you're watching the video, you know, I have no idea if it's gone or not. Check you'll have to check the listing, right? But if you're watching this within a week or within you know, a couple of weeks of me uploading it, it's probably still there. So, absolutely check it out. This is if you've been wanting to get your hands on a well-made uh, integral knife that's using premium materials, but you don't want to break the bank, right? And you don't want to spend four, five, six hundred dollars on one. This is a great, oh, such a great option. I'm so happy that this exists. Very happy with this. Anybody who spends the money on it, you're gonna be happy with it, right? Unless you're, if there's something, you know, wrong, wrong with it or something, which is unlikely. The BRS knives that I've handled have all come great. But yeah, very cool. All right, guys, check this knife out. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.